10 Unbelievable Ancient Greek Practices and Beliefs Number 10. Sweaty Medicine Greek athletes were the most impressive and revered athletes from their time. People always wanted a piece of them. The athletes would oil up with olive oil because it was viewed as beneficial to health and do whatever Olympic tasks in the buff. So they would box, run, and even do equestrian events, and that oil on their body picked up all kinds of debris and of course sweat. Oil isn't the easiest thing to wash off. If you've ever tried, you understand. So it would scrape off all the filth with a tool called a striggle made of metal. You would think that after scraping off all their gross sweat, dead skin cells, and dirt, they'd want to toss it far away, <laughs> not the Greeks. This disgusting concoction known as gloios was used as medicine to alleviate aches and pains. At least, the sweat wasn't ingested, it was spread on the inflamed areas instead. Of course, this practice does nothing beneficial for the body, except maybe make people think you've been competing all day because you smell terrible. Number 9. Better than being a eunuch. Maybe not. The unfortunate slaves of Grecian times couldn't even fool around as they pleased. Many of the male slaves had a metal ring secured around their genitalia to seal it tightly. The chastity devices were secured shortly before puberty. Attaching the rings were preferable to having eunuch slaves because eunuchs were prone to health problems and not having the strength of a fully matured man. Female slaves wore a chastity chain that would cover and be attached to their genitalia so that it was impossible to have anything go on down there without immediate pain. Slave owners' point of view was that the slaves were there to work and not to be distracted. Greek and Romans are believed to be some of the first people to start using chastity devices. Number 8. Maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's crock poo. An ancient Greek medical document proposes to quote, levigate the dung of the land crocodile with water and anoint. This anointed dung was used for treating scars in the eye area and you'd apply it like you would apply eyeshadow. Also, when women wanted to bring color to their faces, they could use things like rose colors or chalk, but also dried crocodile dung. While we are a culture that likes to bring back old fashions and trends, this likely won't be making a comeback in the frenzy of Instagram type makeup, which we can all be greatly relieved about. Another little known thing about crocodiles back then was that they were big scoundrels. Not only were crocodile bites common enough to be recorded, it was warned that if a crocodile goes to the person's house that they bit and pees on the wound, that the person will die. So apparently these wild crocodiles had a bad habit of peeing on people when they were already down. Number 7. Roosters Exchange Greek men would take on young boys as apprentices and teach them the ways of the world. That might sound innocent enough and be a way to bring up boys knowing more about the world than they would have without that influence, but the older men weren't looking for lost souls to teach. They were looking for the most good looking boys of the bunch. The men would present a live rooster to the boy in exchange for certain favors. Who could say no to a rooster? Such chivalry is dead nowadays, thank god. The out for these boys was time. As they grew older and began to sprout facial hair, that is when the men did away with their young companions who were now growing into men themselves. Then the heinous cycle continued on with the now grown boy doing his own rooster trading. Number 6. Just sneeze it away. Great contraception news! Women no longer have to take little pills every day, get injected once every three months, or stick anything inside their bodies. All you have to do is squat and sneeze. Well, at least that's what ancient Greeks believed to be what was needed if a woman didn't want to become pregnant. Doctors recommended shaking out the quote unwanted fluid, jumping up and down, and sneezing. Of course, now we know that sneezing does absolutely nothing to prevent pregnancy, but Greek physician Seranus thought this was a great and easy way to go about contraception. For any people who have gotten it in their heads that all they need to do is sneeze to not have a baby, please refer to your doctor ahead of time. Number 5. No Charmin here. Today we have all kinds of toilet paper. We have two ply, one ply, some with characters printed on it, and even scented toilet paper. The ancient Greeks weren't so lucky though. They had the choice of attaching a sponge to a stick, which was only available if you could afford it, or a stone. So imagine going into a friend's lavatory to do your business, and when you look for toilet paper, you're met with a little pile of stones or shards of ceramic pots. In this photo, you see a small round stone. That stone and others like it were once thought to be game pieces, but it's now believed that they are the ancient form of toilet paper. Most people won't even use off-brand toilet paper in their homes, let alone scrape a stone against themselves. Well, in Europe, toilet paper wasn't going to get there until the 16th century, and there's only so long you can squat waiting for a roll. If you hadn't been wronged or had an enemy back then, you might scratch their name into a ceramic pot, shatter the pot, and then use those pieces as a sort of personal revenge to clean up your behind. Makes you really appreciate that Charmin now, doesn't it? Number 4. Underwater Exploration 
If you've ever watched Pirates of the Caribbean, you've seen something similar to what the ancient Greeks once used to submerge themselves underwater, where a pocket of air in a wooden boat was used to breathe from and to travel underwater. Diving bells were inverted kettles and barrels submerged and held down by weights. Air was trapped in the diving bells, and this allowed the divers to return to a place to breathe from and not surface. From the illustrations, you can see clearly how the diving bells were used. This greatly increased diving time, and Aristotle even recorded the Greek divers in 360 BC using this method. Number 3. Taste Test Hippocrates, the man who created the Hippocratic Oath that still has influence in parts of doctors of the modern world, were glad that not all of the Hippocratic medicine practices he believed in are still followed. He had a few beliefs that would make you sick to your stomach. And of that sick to come out, he would want to taste how sweet it was. Hippocrates thought that each bodily fluid had a taste, so ancient doctors in Greece were taught the specific taste to each bodily fluid to check for illnesses. Doctors would make sure urine tasted like fig juice. Apparently that's what they thought it was supposed to taste like in a healthy person. Vomit sweetness would be tasted, and even your earwax wasn't safe from the tasting test. Now, we aren't suggesting that doctors only tasted their patients to diagnose them back then, but this is among one of the grossest things doctors had to do. Number two, spontaneous generation. Aristotle, a brilliant man, but also sometimes just plain wrong. He believed that certain animals like eels, lice, flies, clams, and a few others, just spontaneously generated out of inanimate objects. Eels, he thought, just formed in the mud. He couldn't explain how they reproduced, so he came up with that as an explanation. What he didn't know was that the eel develops gonads in time as it travels a 6,000 mile journey from Greek rivers to Sargossa Sea to spawn and then die. The baby eels then make their way back to Greek rivers, which made it seem though eels were just growing from the mud as adults. Unfortunately, spontaneous generation was influential all the way until 1668, when an Italian scientist disproved one of the Greek philosopher's theories. Number one, wandering womb. First, let's explain that outrageous belief that a woman's womb was able to wander around the body as it pleases and was sensitive to aromas. It could travel low in the body and cause sudden death and hysteria so it would be drawn up with pleasant smells, and if the womb traveled upwards, it would be driven down by doctors, making the woman smell cow dung and other terrible things. The women were to drink a mixture of roast mule excrement and wine. Delicious. Most ailments that affected women were treated in gross manner and were terribly uninformed, probably due to a wide belief that women were somehow lesser beings, and that, like Aristotle believed, women were deformed versions of males. Yeah. 